Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new video responding to the live stream that APOS had with the most obvious fake philosopher in history, David Wood. And this video is going to be so interesting. By the end of this video, you would realize why Muslims call David Wood the destroyer of Christianity. The Quran never mentions Yahweh. The Hadith never mention Yahweh. No Islamic source ever mentions Yahweh. The Actually, I also would like to add that the name Yahweh cannot be found in the New Testament either. So I guess that Jews and Christians worship different gods as well. Uh, uh, important point. <laughs> Go ahead, David. <laughs> uh, so look at what look at what he just said. Um, <laughs> when you see the way Apos laughs, you'd think that Farid made a very bad argument. Let's listen to David Wood explaining why Farid's argument is very bad to the extent that it made Apos burst into laughter. In in the video that they just, in the part of the video that they just showed immediately before this, you see exactly why that is. So you showed, you showed the the Shema, right? Mm -hmm. And you showed it as Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, right? Yeah. And when in reality, as you pointed out, it's Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad. So why do yeah. why do Jews say um, Adonai instead of Yahweh? Well, by the time you get to uh, well, I mean, I mean, starting off in the Old Testament, they, they eventually got to the point where because taking the Lord's name in vain, people think taking the Lord's name in vain is, you know, something, uh, oh my God, or something like that, which, you know, to, to be careful, you might not want to do that or something like that. But in context, it's actually using that name, using the name Yahweh in le like that. And so Jews became so terrified that they would utter the name of Yahweh in vain, meaning they're, you know, just flippantly or something like that, that they started avoiding saying it at all, right? You, you don't want to say it. You start mm -hmm. replacing it with something like Adonai. And so you replace it with something else in order to avoid saying it. So by the time you get to the New Testament and the, the Gospels are written in Greek, when you're going to uh, use a word, even if they're quoting Old Testament scripture that refers to Yahweh, they use they use kurias, which is which is Lord, because they don't they didn't even hey we're not going to put this we're not going to start writing this name here right, um, so it was it was to it was because this had become uh, this had become a trend you you need to be ex exceedingly careful about using that name that they did not want to use that name and so it would be replaced with Lord. They're clearly aware of it. They're quoting the Old Testament left and right. They're clearly aware of what the name is. They know that's the name. They're, they they have knowledge of that. But you get to the you get to the Quran, and it's not Allah is saying, okay, don't call me by the covenant name that I revealed to the Jews. Don't call me by that name because you might take my name in vain. He seems to have absolutely no clue that there ever was such a name. Um, yeah. And he's got this. He's got this. This new name that you can say. You can just say it all day long, and you don't have those same concerns about taking taking the Lord's name uh, in vain. You know what's very funny? I'm just checking the original video, which they are responding. So let's go through it again. Apos argues that the name Yahweh does not exist in any Islamic source. Farid responds by saying that even in the New Testament the name Yahweh does not exist. Apus laughs and David explains why Farid's point was invalid. So how do we respond to this argument of David? Well, luckily I don't have to do anything at all. All I need to do is just play a clip of one of the biggest anti-Islam clowns out there, which is Sam Shemon, who was a very good friend of David. So Sam Shimon is going to do it for us. This is very interesting. Let's listen to Sam Shimon. Okay, you know why that's a bad argument? To say that Muhammad never used the divine name Yahweh because he didn't know the name and therefore cannot be a true prophet. And he's not a true prophet, but for other reasons. It's not a good argument. 
to use. Had he been a true prophet, he would have known the name. Okay, you know that's not a good argument, guys. You know that's not a good argument. Can anyone tell me why that's not a good argument? You will not find anywhere in the New Testament where the divine name Yahweh is used. Never. The divine name Yahweh is never used. Now you have the abbreviated form Yah as part of the compound name Alleluia used in heaven when John in the spirit hears the inhabitants of heaven shouting at the destruction of Babylon on earth, Revelation 19, 1, Revelation 19, verses 3 to 4, Revelation 19, verse 6, but the divine name Yahweh never used by any inspired author of the Greek New Testament. So are we now going to be consistent and say the authors of the New Testament, Matthew is not a true apostle, Mark is not a true apostle, Matthew did not use the divine name. Mark did not use the divine name. Luke and Acts, the author, Luke, did not use the divine name. John in the Gospel of John and the Epistles of John did not use the divine name. Paul did not use the divine name. James did not use the divine name. Jude did not use the divine name. Therefore, if you're consistent, that means these authors, these apostles disqualified themselves. Nonsense. Silly. What did they use instead? You guys got it. They use the word kirius or kurias, kirius. Now, let me ask you guys a question. The word kirius, kurias, how do you translate it in English? Now, for the rest of you, it's Lord, right? You answered correctly, God bless you. You're paying attention, not letting the demons distract you. It's Lord. Now, guys, can I ask you a question? You have no problem with the Holy Spirit inspiring the New Testament authors to use the Greek word for Lord, Kyrios, as a substitute synonym for the divine name, right? Hide them, guys, quickly, right? If you believe the New Testament writings are inspired by the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit gave his approval, his amen, for Kyrios, Kurios being used in place of Yahweh as the synonym for Yahweh, right? Of course you believe that. Of course you say yes, because we know the New Testament is fired by the Holy Spirit in Greek. So Holy Spirit moved these authors to use Kyrios, Kurios, Lord, as the equivalent, as the acceptable Substitute synonym for Yahweh. Uh, that, that's where the Muslim catches you. That's where the Muslim catches you. Allahu Akbar. But wait. The Quran calls Allah Rabb. Rabb. R-A-B-B. -B. And that's the Arabic word for Lord. So word Lord in Arabic is Rabb. In Greek it's Kyrios. In Hebrew it's Adon. In Aramaic it's Mar. So if the Holy Spirit approved and inspired the authors of the New Testament to use the Greek word Lord, Kyrios, as an acceptable substitute for Yahweh, then why do you complain that the Quran uses the Arabic word for Lord, Rab, for the true God, which would be the Arabic equivalent of the Greek word Kyrios, and the Arabic equivalent for the Hebrew word Adon, where we get Adonai, and the Arabic equivalent for the Aramaic Mar. Wow, guys. Why are you so inconsistent? Imagine being refuted by Sam Shemon. Sam Shemon, who presented one of the most stupid anti-Islam arguments in history. Sam Shimon, the one who claims that Allah prays for Muhammad. Sam Shimon, who claims that the Quran says that Allah Azzawajal repents. Sam Shimon, who says that in heaven, there is a woman called the mother of the book. This is the first time in which Sam Shimon successfully refutes an argument. And it's the first time that I hear Sam Shimon makes sense. Because think about it. David Wood believes that
that the author of the gospel were inspired by the Holy Spirit. If God inspired these authors to use a different name, does that mean God was worried that his name would be taken in vain? And if he was worried, then why did he reveal it around 6,000 times in the Old Testament? So Sam Shimon is right. If you believe that God inspired the author of the Gospels not to use his real name because he didn't want his name to be taken in vain, then why wouldn't you apply the same to Islam? Why wouldn't you say that God didn't want his name to be taken in vain? That's why he didn't reveal it in the Quran. So Sam Shimon successfully exposed your hypocritical double standards. On one hand, you're accepting the idea that God inspired the authors of the Gospels not to use his name because he didn't want his name to be taken in vain. On the other hand, you argue that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not know God's name because that name was not revealed in the Quran. Well, if you were consistent, then you would say that just like in the New Testament, God didn't inspire the authors to use his real name in the Quran, God didn't reveal his real name. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that God's name in Islam is Yahweh. I'm just exposing the hypocrisy of David Wood and Apus. So David Wood, the destroyer of Christianity, is arguing that the name Yahweh does not exist in the New Testament because it was a Jewish tradition not to take God's name in vain. He forgot that Christians believe that these Gospels were inspired by God. And it's absolutely ridiculous to argue that God didn't inspire the authors to use his name because of Jewish tradition. If you pay someone money to destroy Christianity, he wouldn't have done it better than David would. God revealed his name in the Old Testament 6,000 times. Then Jews, because they were afraid of taking the name in vain, changed the name. When God inspired the New Testament, he thought like, well, Jews were right. I should not inspire the Gospels author to use my name. So the Almighty God was also affected by Jewish tradition. That's already a problem. But if you want to go with that, fine. Let's now use Sam Shemun's argument. If God inspired the New Testament author not to use his name, why is it abnormal that he would do the same when he revealed the Quran? That's all I wanted to say in this video. Big thanks to the Kung Fu Panda, Sam Shemon, for refuting the most obvious fake philosopher in history and his Apus friend. This also shows that David Wood is more concerned about saving his Apus friend than about Christianity. He is willing to destroy Christianity in order to save an Apus. Thank you so much for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.